energy. It doesn't grow on trees, and yet our society simply cannot function without it. We use it everywhere. In our homes. In our jobs. And in our streets. However, with global energy consumption projected to double by the year 2050, our planet cannot continue to bear the environmental cost of non-renewable energy resources, but that's where we come in. Wind turbines can harness the energy in the wind with no damaging effect on the environment. We were set the challenge to design and make a small-scale wind turbine less than 45 centimetres in diameter and that could be 3D printed in one piece. Whilst these turbines have three blades for stability purposes, our turbine has two in order to be more efficient at higher RPM. In addition to these size and manufacturing constraints, our turbine could not exceed 3000 RPM whilst operational and must have a tip speed ratio in between 3 and 8. As our turbine would have a 45 cm diameter, we designed for a TSR of 5 so that we did not exceed 3000 RPM at the highest wind speed of 12 meters per second. In addition, our wind turbine must also rotate clockwise with respect to the incoming winds. So with our preliminary design choices made, it was time to consider the aerodynamics. To select the most suitable aeroflow section for this project, initial research had to be carried out. Carrying out initial research led to the deduction that the SG Group aerofoil would be the most suitable for small wind turbine blades, since they had a high LVD value with sufficient thickness to withstand the structural loads that the wind turbine would be exposed to. Having calculated the Reynolds number that the wind turbine would operate at as being around 100,000, we were able to use aerofoil tools to sort for these requirements. Shortlisting from these aerofoils for the highest CL over CD and alpha values gave us three final aerofoils, namely SG6043, SG6042, SG6040. Different aerofoil parameters such as CL, CD and alpha were all compared for the three different aerofoil sections that we had shortlisted. As the aerofoil section SG6043 had the highest CL over CD against alpha value when compared to the other three aerofoils as can be seen on this graph, it was chosen as our final aerofoil for our small wind turbine blade. The performance of the design was analysed by a MATLAB code which implemented the blade element theory. Blade element theory is widely used in the industry and it is easy to understand, implement and gives a close approximation if done properly. The flow around the blade can be approximated as two-dimensional since the flow field around a section of the blade is similar to flow around other sections. Therefore, we can analyse the flow field of a general section first, shown in red. The section is rotated by the pitch angle beta of the blade at this section. Then, the incoming air velocity can be decomposed into a parallel and a perpendicular component to the wind speed. The parallel component, VT, must be calibrated to take the deceleration of air into account, as the blade takes energy out of the flow. This is done using the induction factor and is assumed to take the optimal value, a third. Once Vt is found, we can find the angle of incidence alpha and the local speed w using the other geometrical parameters. Then, using the experimental data of the section, we can find the non-dimensional coefficients cd and cl. After that, we can find the lift and drag forces, which is then added together to find the produced torque of the section. The overall torque of the blade is then found by summarizing the torque of all sections along the blade. Although the calculated lift and drag forces were reasonable, the torque was overestimated and the efficiency of the blade exceeded 1. Unable to fix the problem, we used only part of the code and then had it to use everyone's favourite software, Keyblade. The forces considered for the structural analysis of the blade were the aerodynamic and the inertial centrifugal forces. Other types of forces such as gravitational were neglected. To account for the changing shape of the blade, the blade was split up into 20 sections. The lift and drag forces per unit blade length as well as the angles relative to the chord line for each section were obtained from the aerodynamic code. These were then resolved into the aerodynamic forces in the direction of the wind and the rotation. These forces along with the distance from the centre of the hub were used to calculate the bending moments in both directions for each section. 
From here, the moment of inertia data calculated from the CAD model for each section, along with the engineer's theory of bending, we used to calculate the stresses due to aerodynamic forces for each section in each direction. For the centrifugal forces, the mass of one of the elements was considered. This was then used to calculate the centrifugal force. The sum of these forces was then used to calculate the total centrifugal force. This was then divided by the area of each section to obtain the centrifugal stresses at each section. The centrifugal and aerodynamic stresses at each section were then compared to this critical stress of the material with 20% safety margin applied. If all the stresses were below this value, then the blade would not fail structurally. However, if this was not the case, the shape of the blade was adjusted. The maximum deflection of the blade in both the wind and rotation directions was calculated using the formula for the deflection of a cantilever beam with a uniformly distributed load. This was all done analytically using a MATLAB script and was reaffirmed by also doing a computational finite element method simulation in Qblade which confirmed that the analytical deflections and stresses were roughly accurate. Having decided on a final airfoil section with a high CL over CD value and was structurally viable, we were able to use a generated wind turbine model in a simulation to calculate the CP values of the wind turbine design. Drawing up our blade design in Creo, we iteratively implemented design changes, including a Schmitz core distribution and a folding one-piece hub design with a hack series nose cone. But we felt that something was missing. Has this ever happened to you? Woken by noisy wind turbines in the middle of the night? Introducing the new serrated blade from Group 3. The blade not only looks good, but it reduces the noise too. The small fringes along the trailing edge of our wings helps reduce the noise they make in flight. We drew inspiration from this and used advanced 3D printing technology and biomimetics to help make our turbine quieter than ever before. Its sawtooth pattern reduces the spanwise component of the trailing edge that contributes to noise generation. Where an unserrated blade produces a large vortex at its tip, our design instead creates many smaller vortices along the serrated section of the blade. The length of the serrations was determined by the boundary layer thickness at the trailing edge, which was modelled meticulously in X-foil. With a 2H over lambda ratio of 4 over 3, the serrations reduce noise efficiently while still being large enough to be manufacturable, producing a theoretical noise reduction of up to 8 decibels. Order now while stocks last. Warning, serrated blade by Group 3 is currently untested and may or may not reduce noise generation. Group 3 will not be liable for any unscheduled assembly that may occur. Always read the label. Our blade was 3D printed from ABS. 3D printing, although very time efficient, involved some challenges for us. The main reason for these issues is that the 3D printer can only print to specific minimum thickness. So basically what 3D printing does is that it takes molten plastic, puts it out of a print head, and when the plastic solidifies, you get your desired 3D printed object. And now we change the print head to a much smaller one. So if we take a look at the two lines, we can clearly see a difference in the thicknesses of the lines. To ramp up production speed of the wind turbines, the manufacturers changed the printing head to a bigger one, which resulted in a less smooth surface. We tried to go around this problem by increasing the overall cord length of our airfoil by one millimeter, but that wasn't enough. But after some skillful finishing from the lads and some sanding and a little bit of sanding and some more sanding with the help of wet and dry paper and acetone we obtained the smooth surface we required as smooth as a baby's butt cheeks. All right, so guys, now that we've finished doing it, what would we do to improve? Well, when we got our hands on the blade, it was quite flimsy towards the root. So what I'd recommend is using a thicker aerofoil section towards the root of our blade. Yeah, and since we had some issues with the trailing edge, I think it would, if we would increase the thickness of the trailing edge in Creo, we should be fine for the 3D printing. Unfortunately, due to the pandemic, we weren't able to test our wind turbine. 
and the world is missing out on the first ever completely silent wind turbine. Perfect, guys. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs>